The universal mobile connector is included with each Model 3. I bought a second one that I keep plugged into my house. Now these should be sealed for the elements. You need to charge in the rain, of course. But at the end of this winter, my button stopped working for a while. After a few weeks, uh, it got even worse and stopped charging completely. Uh, and I noticed eventually that when I plugged it in, I got a charge equipment error. It took a few weeks, but I got Tesla to replace it with a new UMC. So I thought it would be a good opportunity to take a look inside and see how this worked, and maybe find out what, figured, what failed. The main shell is completely sealed. Uh, there's no seams, but there's some rubber over molding. So I peeled that off just to find, look for screws or something, but no luck. It seems to be completely sonic welded shut, so I had to cut it open with a Dremel. And we're in. The top of the board has some LEDs. There's some sockets for pins that poke through from underneath. And not a whole lot else. Four screws and the whole top lifts off. All the power, the AC stays basically on the bottom. And the top board is just uh, digital low voltage control. Now the bottom has a relay and what looks like a current sensor on top, but both lines go through it so it's actually a ground fault sensor. After the sensor is the main relay and I think there's voltage and current sensors for each line inside the relay. The wires connect through the bottom. The top board basically has a AC to DC power supply. So those are the larger components you see on top. And then all the surprising number of digital chips there, and they're all conformal coded, so it's designed to get wet. But everything looks good in here. I thought I would go further and just remove all these surprisingly tight torque screws that hold down all the AC connections as well as the relay module. Here's a closer look at that relay. Pretty impressive custom part there with the GFCI sensor on the front. Moving on to the handle, there's no seams at all. So I cut it a little bit and I was able to pull back the adhesive top. Now there's a break in the plastic under the button and you can see a little green below, so something's in there. When I was cutting in with a Dremel, the dust changed from black to gray, which means I struck potting. Potting is something that's poured in hard and makes things invincible and heavy, protecting electronics inside from every moisture and anything else. But when I touch it, there's my problem. I can see water underneath this gasket. So let's peel back that gasket. And yep, everything is wet. You can see charring on R4, corrosion on D2. No doubt that switch is full of water and this board is fried. So I found the problem, but I would have expected this to be potted more and completely sealing that board. So perhaps it was just a manufacturing defect that allowed water in, which no doubt started to freeze and thaw and make things worse. Um, now, while my two original mobile connectors had the same part number, the part number did change slightly for the replacement one. So perhaps they've corrected this issue. Something may have changed the design of production. Uh, we'll see if the issue comes back with the new unit. But for now, you have a better idea of what's going inside the Gen 2 mobile connector.